Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each, each month, we were on a special called, feature called Into the Vault, where we look at iconic TV series or movies uh, throughout the decades that have left their lasting mark in terms of the industry, the entertainment industry. Whether we are talking about a 60s uh, movie in terms of a cowboy and Indians movie, maybe we're talking a 70s police cop a detective show, maybe we're talking about an 80s romance story maybe we're talking about a 1990s uh, horror movie maybe it's a 21st century love story or may maybe it's a, a turn to the century in terms of a natural disasters tv series whatever the genre whatever the team whatever the decade we look into it and up for discussion this week we're going back maybe Roughly 13, 13 years, we're going back to 2010. And for all the followers who have a great interest in ancient civilizations and ancient times, this is going to be a right treat. It's going to be up your alley. It all debates about dealing back to the modern times of the ancient Romans in terms of uh, Macedonia, Greeks, uh, in terms of all the sort of uprising that, that came about, the modern day gladiators is what we call them. And we're delving, we're going to talk about a special TV series that rocked the industry in terms of 2010 when it came out it was really brought the realism and nature to life it was obviously Spartacus uh, it came out in 2010 39 episodes over three seasons and we're delighted to be joined by one of the stars of the show he, made, he arrived on the Spartacus in the second season and made himself a permanent uh, character as the lead uh, character playing Spartacus himself the, the one and only uh, Liam McIntyre. Um, first of all, Liam, Spartacus, uh, 2010, uh, I suppose. Does it feel almost like it's 13 years ago now since you were, uh, dare, dare I say, uh, going out in bare sandals in terms of uh, getting uh, rolling around in sand, uh, playing with knives uh, every, teen every teenage boy's dream? <laughs> hey there, Jim. It's nice to speak to you. Uh, I, during that intro, I was like, oh, please stop saying how long ago it was. It hasn't really been a decade since it's happened. Yeah, it was. Um, it doesn't feel that long ago. It was such a, I mean, it was extreme. It was a life changing experience for me in every way. So I, um, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head, though. Like I was, it felt like being a 10 year old kid, just um, you know, getting out there and 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 living out your, your boyish fantasies of swinging swords around and fighting against the bad guys for the greater good and all that sort of thing it was um it's a dream come true and it doesn't it doesn't feel like that long ago even though and you know I'm, the old body was thinks about it and goes oh geez that'd be hard <laughs> and i suppose Liam, just i was supposed to be dare not to mention the casting in terms of the ca the fellow actors that were cast oh no andy and, yeah no uh, i mentioned mention uh, away uh, no, i'm just going to mention them there in terms of some of the iconic uh, names in terms of lucy lawless manu Bennett, B vivia bankini peter mensa john Han hannah katrina law uh, Anna Hutchinson, Leslie Ann Brandt, Nikki Taribio, Ellen Holman, uh, real, real strong casting in terms of Spartacus right from the off. And uh, when you, uh, Liam, came into it in the second uh, season, God forbid, after the tragedy that happened at Andy Whitfield, when you saw that last list of actors uh, and actresses that you were getting to work beside and the foundations, you must have been sort of chomped at the bit. I mean, John Hanna is an absolute legend in terms of being a great well, so I never actually got to work with John. I met John for the first time because because I don't know, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but John Hanna, um, he, he finds it a little hard to speak after the end of the first season. Um, but yeah, no, he, he I actually met him at a convention for Spartacus years later, and he's an absolute magic piece of work. I was very happy to see him in The Last of Us uh, just a little bit in, in that recent show that's, that's absolutely magic. But, um, you know, he's Look, he's he's a laugh riot and a talented man beyond means. He's one of the best things uh, in the show. And uh, but you know, working with Lucy, who's an absolute icon in every sense of the word, was you know she everyone everyone was so down to earth and and just just absolute magic. You know, like they were. I was obviously coming in in the sort of the saddest of all circumstances. They it got sadder as it went along because at first, poor Andy Whitfield, who was an absolute brilliant was was an absolute brilliant actor. Um, you know, his, his tragedy is, he's, he's, for those that don't know, hopefully they, they you do. It's, uh, he was, he was Spartacus to begin with, and he's absolutely brilliant in the first season. And then the poor guy got cancer. And so he had to step away from the role and they needed to replace him. 
and I was the the person who got to take up that mantle and that legacy. Uh, and then obviously midway through shooting the first the, my first season, um, sadly we got the news that he he didn't didn't win his battle, which is very very sad. Um, but yeah, every everyone that was in that boat when I first came in that was wishing Andy well at the time and 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 hopeful that I could could do a job um was so supportive and so kind and they didn't feel like the mega stars that some of them are you know and 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 they would they were just they were just kind and generous with their time and their efforts just to make me feel you know i i don't i don't believe there's been you know they've, they've replaced darren in bewitched and things like that but i don't think they've from what i heard they hadn't they'd never replaced the titular character of a show before so i i was quite green as an actor and i don't i don't know now if i could now do what i did then because now that I know what the rules are, I, I probably would have been even more overwhelmed than I was at the time. But I was very lucky to have great producers and, and writers and everyone from the top to the bottom just be so kind and helpful to try and get this actor across the line to, to be able to do the job that was required of him. I'm lucky man. And I suppose, Liam, you mentioned that in terms of the lead actor being replaced. We have a famous show here in Ireland. I know you've been here for a while. You've probably heard of it, Father Ted, in terms of TV, <laughs> comedy, sort of series. And Dermot Morgan, the lead actor, obviously yeah. uh, passed away in terms of that. But it was just comedy gold. Dare not brought in anyone to play the character of Father Ted when it sort of yeah. happened to actually died when actually the series was on in terms of the the the, the yeah. end of the sort of third series. So it is a rarity is sort of such but I'm rare. just intrigued in terms of the landing that role in terms of replacing Andy Whitfield was the competition fierce I imagine it was fierce did you have to <laughs> beg and claw and scratch basically to get that role I mean yeah I, I, I in a literal sense sure again I, I, I can't speak highly enough of ignorance being bliss in some regards like I um I was working in a cinema down in Australia. I was I was in the head office and I just got like the job of my dreams for the job that wasn't going to be my dream job, you know, like the the promotion that was like, oh man, I wish I could work in this part of the business if if I'm if acting's not going to work out, which I guess it won't. Uh, and then I got this call to do this audition for Spartacus. And I remember thinking, if I just got an like, hey, good job, then I'd feel like maybe, maybe I'm not terrible at acting and this might still be something I could do on the side, you know, be, be a bit of fun. And then they said, OK, and then I did the audition and they liked it. And then and then they said, do another one. I'd never really had that before. And they were, they were like, all right, do another one and then come over to New Zealand and, and do another one. And obviously now I know, like I found out later, they went through thousands, thousands of people, literally thousands. Um, at the time, I was just like, oh, well, this is this is a lot. Like, uh, how wonderful. I'm sure they'll eventually work out that they won't hire me. But but for now, what, what magic I get to go to a country I'd never been to at the time and and have fun. You know, I think I said I saw you too while I was there with my per diems that I got from the job, and and I thought I was having the time of my life. And I and we and yeah, I went there to train because I I wasn't I wasn't gladiator shape by any stretch of the imagination, and so they they were trying to whip me into shape to see if I could do that, and and I did my best, and so and so far so good. And and then one day they were, I was about to go into the gym again, and they were like, oh no, today we've got to go in and do uh do we soon uh, do the the test auditions with with the other actors, and I was like, what other actors? I'm like, oh. I didn't know how test deals work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. And um, and yeah, so there was other some other actors there, uh, very very talented actors. And as soon as they walked in, I was like, well, I was like, okay, that that makes sense now. <laughs> now I know I'm definitely not getting the job. And and they were fantastic, but I guess they saw something in me that they liked, and they they kept me on, and still didn't give me the job. And then they got five more actors in to do the same again, and didn't pick them either. And then. So this, it went on for about six months, I think, in total. And then, yeah, it was it was right now. Now, I think if it wait, if I have to wait three days before somebody says yes or no, I get a bit stressed. And then I didn't know what was going on. So I was like, OK, I, I guess this is just how it works, I guess. Um, and yeah. And then and then one day, I, you know, I went to bed on the Friday and I said I'd had a big chat with my agent. We said, look, if six months is a lot, guys, I, I don't know, like. I think we might have to tell them that we, we, we probably can't do this for too much longer. It's starting to hurt my heart a little bit. And, and then on the Monday, I got the call. That they, they, my, I'll never forget it as long as I live when my agent calls me up and says, uh, yeah, hi, who's this? And I said, it's Liam. And he's like, oh, that's a shame. I wanted to speak to Spartacus. And I was like, you're joking. And he's like, yeah, man, you got the job. And so it was one of the basic, you know, happiest days of my life. It's, it's uh, impossible to explain. But yeah, I, I guess... I didn't feel like begging and scraping as much as just going and putting your head down and just saying, yes, sir, how high, sir, for six months and then never expecting in a million years for it to work out. And then sure enough, it worked out. That's beyond imagination. 
Liam, I got to ask you, those sort of six months in terms of the auditions, obviously the stunts that are in Spartacus and in yeah. terms of the stunts and the abilities in terms of, did you have any sort of background as an actor in terms of stunt training, in terms of the auditions? And when you were there for the six months, were you trying to say, right, I this is something I, apart from my acting, this is something I really need to work on in terms of versatility, in terms of the agility of factors, because obviously Spartacus, we know he's a fantastic, not only the actor, but he's probably one of the, Lauders is probably one of the greatest fighters ever in terms of that. Yeah. So, do you oh, try no, to no, think no. to yourself, or you think to yourself, right, I got to be able to do this, 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 and this. And when you landed the role, then you were, were you trying to say, well, what sort of stunt team I'm going to be working with? Or yeah, no, well, I mean, again, I, I, now I probably would have all those questions. Just then I was just along for, I was just along for the ride. Again, I can't stress how much in a million years I never thought it would ever pan out. So I had, I had an amazing stunt team. Like Al Poppleton and his crew, like Al's done so many incredible films. He has such a high level of work and demanded such a high level of work from me. Good God, that's a whole story in itself. But, um, but yeah, you know, like I, I wasn't, a particularly agile and fit person before all this i am now but but then that was that was the, the cornerstone of all that they, they built that from nothing they they carved it out of whole clay you know and um but i was always stubborn and earnest and willing to do you know uh, you know to, to put it put the effort in i think so yeah it, it was i mean they had an amazing stunt team and i had one of the best stunt doubles in rachel vasilev um you could imagine so he could he could have covered me but i guess in in what happens is that the 10 year old in you goes well i want to do that so I just put in, I put in the work and saw what I could get to. I mean, off, off air, we talked about how I'd actually, the reason I became an actor was, was being tricked into acting by an Irish, di- Irish guy when I, got, when I studied in UCC. And the other thing that I did at UCC in, in Cork was uh, trampolining of all things. Cause I was like, what's the maddest kind of, what's the maddest sport I can choose to make friends while I'm here. And I was like, let's do that. And so I, the only real like stunt experience was was doing tumbles on a, on a trampoline for like a year, which was kind of amazing, traveling around the world. Third in Ireland back in, in, in what, 2001 I was uh, in novice trampolining. No, don't want to brag. Um, but yeah, so, so I didn't have a lot of stunt experience except for that and what they taught me on um, during those six months and into the show itself. But they were so good. They got me up to speed. And, and, um, and by the end of it, I, I felt, capable to do a huge array of stunts I, I, I managed to do a really cool game uh called jedi fallen order which is a star wars game obviously they've just released the sequel to it and i, I remember going into s- lightsaber stunt training and they were like oh you're the guy from spartacus oh you'll be great here have some have some swords and off we go and it was just a fine compliment that they were like you know bringing me onto the team and and helping and you know and, and taking taking respecting my ability to fight with two swords and all these crazy things that i couldn't imagine of ever having the skills to do but it was yeah uh, I got I got upskilled incredibly when I was in, in that show in Spartacus. I suppose Liam, when it came out on Irish TV in 2010, obviously mm. back uh, before some of the sort of big networks and it debuted here in Irish TV, we were sort of blown away in terms of the reaction, in terms of the realism. Normally, these sort of TV series depicting ancient civilizations, they're what I say they're mellowed down uh, in terms of yeah, down, in terms of the violence, mm. in terms of the actual uh, physical relationships, uh, the sex scenes, all those sorts of things are they're mellowed down sort of TV. I suppose Spartacus showed us what actually really happened in terms of realism, in terms of that gore, in terms of how the Romans partied, in terms of what yeah. actually went on to society. And it sort of rocked the boundaries as if to say, this is what really history was like. Yeah, it was, you know, it was it was kind of fantastic to play something that was so visceral and raw, you know, and, and like you said, like I know a lot of people to, at, at the time, it was, in a way, it was a bit, it was before Game of Thrones, a little bit ahead of its time in a way. And and so a lot of people were like, oh, it's, it's gratuitous. I'm like, hey, look, that's not, that's not incorrect. It's more that, you know, in, in Rome, in the day, back in the day, it was, it was no holds barred. It was brutal. Like, you know, it was fight to the death stuff. It was, you know, throw them to throw the Christians to the lions kind of business, you know? And um, so a lot of that was, it, it, it was just, you know, it was, you know, filmified, movieified, you know, and, and, and punched up to be more exciting, I guess, but it was, it was raw and yeah. And then, and, and you know, the, the various orgies and things that, that, you know, that they portray weren't, weren't like, Oh, go into a room and close the door and cut to the next scene though. You know, it, it was one of the finest compliments I've probably ever got about the show was from George R. R. Martin when I met him 
and he was saying i used to love your show and it was a real like it really helped us open the door for game of thrones and the things we, we got to do there in the end and i was like that is a very fine compliment because your show is exceptional um so yeah it was it was nice to be recognized as, as one of the early players in this kind of you know, it's sort of no holds barred, very raw, very earnest, very honest kind of portrayal of of times that are maybe not as civil for all their civilization. You know, it's a, they were they were very you know very brutal in in many regards and across across many gamuts. So it was, uh, yeah, and it was it was it was cool to see it on TV and to shake up television a bit and to see what happened afterwards. It was great. And one thing that really struck me about Spartacus is, is in terms, I know it was shot in uh, New Zealand, but in mm. terms of obviously there was always an awful lot of off, I uh, dare say, outside shooting and uh, outside sort of locations, but being able to create and reminisce those sort of scenes in terms of uh, ancient Rome and in terms of the settings, in terms of the, the cast, the design, this wasn't a really a stage production, it was massive in terms of where it sort of took all this in terms <laughs> of uh, it sort of shoots and locations in terms well, of that. And, uh, was, can, that I, was, can I blow your mind about that? Can I? Yeah. We never went off set once. Not one time. Wow. Really? I know, right? I know. It was the amount of times I'd go into a full forest inside a house and go, you know, we're in New Zealand. There's a forest right there. Like, if you look out this door, let me open this door for you. See that? That's a forest. We have one of those. And they're like, no, because they want to control the special effects and the lighting. So everything. There was a whole city built inside an old fruit packing um, building. It was, Whoa. you. I, yeah, same. I, I know. Like, it was the most magical show because... You'd walk into like some unassuming building in, in Auckland and inside would be Rome. And you're like, oh God, okay then. And and all green screens around it. When you see it on film, you're like, good God, it, it just looks like I've traveled to, you know, Mesopotamia or something like it's Or I've traveled to, yeah. you know, to, to like Southern Italy or something. It's incredible what they did. And and it, to, to this day, it still shocks me that they did all of that. Every single shot, not once did I travel outside of that studio. Well, they, they had like, Four studios all up, all with different locations. Whether that be the forest or the you know the river or the the the, the city Sinuessa or whatever you know, and they and they and they just used those. It was it was like nothing else. So yeah, it, it, I know I I'm I'm very grateful that you think that we traveled all over the countryside doing it, but unfortunately we we know, I I actually think I had vitamin D deficiency after the first season because I never saw outside. It was just wow. started four in the morning, finish at eight at night, never see the sun. And I, was, I think I got sick from it because I didn't think about that. And uh, Liam, in terms of your you arrived in season two and obviously season three, do as actors when you arrived in role, were you given a sort of story arc for the season, or were you just in the dark in terms of each episode, in terms of getting the the script yeah. each week, in terms of what yeah. was going to happen next, or did you have an idea in terms of who was going to die, who was going to be killed off, or was it a surprise no, we, that was, that... the table reads every week? That proved to be a very, like, I was the only happy actor, I think, because I was like, well, it's called Spartacus, so surely they're not going to kill him off. Um, but every other actor would be turning each page with a sense of trepidation going, what's happening next? And someone, sometimes you'd see their face fall and you'd be like, oh, buddy, last episode? They're like, yeah, apparently. Um, no, they're, normally they'd tell them. But like, yeah, no, it, it because of the nature of it, you know, the, the, the television moves so slowly and so quickly in equal measure. So Steve and his team, Steve of the Night, the incredible showrunner, um you know he's real he's working a million miles a minute and he's getting notes and they're getting things and they're like oh we can't build that set and we can't do this and we can't go here and oh we need to change this and we need to change that this actor's sick this week you know whatever it might be you know um and so a lot of it is is i mean obviously they have a huge plan because they're they're good at their job but you know you'd have to they, they would constantly be adjusting these things you know so um yeah they had this you know you, you didn't necessarily know what was going to happen week to week like i i knew where it was going because i knew the history of the character i sort of knew what they i assumed they were going to plan for and and i'm not sure you know you, you don't know if they're going to stick to it and how closely they will so what what little i guess what little is known about his his actual day-to-day -day actions but um you have a sense that you know there's going to be pirates at some stage and he's going to be sort of betrayed and then at some point there's going to be a split with the group you know but you didn't have like you know, you didn't necessarily know what was going on week to week. So yeah, every time we got the script, I, I would always be like, have you got, have you got even the draft for me? I just want to get out in front of this thing, try to get myself ready. But um, yeah, you know, but it was kind of good because I guess in the acting of it all, you know, it's not like you, the human being playing, you know, as, as that character, 
you wouldn't know what's happening next week, would you? You just got to hope for the best. So you do, I guess, in a, in a real sense, it, it was probably quite helpful playing it as it came, as opposed to going, all right, well, I better do this now because in 15 episodes time, I'll be here. So I better, you know, make sure I start doing this. So it kind of lets you be more in the moment, which I think is probably better for the actual performances. And what struck me about Spartacus was the detail that went into wardrobe and costume and design, even all the garments that the Romans sort of wore, mm. even the Roman women, uh, Vivia Bianchi's character, Ellen Holman's character as well, the detail that went into those gowns yeah, yeah. and sort of frocks and was a sort of makeup and wardrobe was uh, was... Was that a busy mornings for actors and actresses to get in, in tune in terms of costumes and in terms of that oh, sort yeah. of design? Oh, we had like we had a whole building of and Barbara Dara. There was we had a whole team of absolutely brilliant costume designers and makeup team, of course. Um, like we had a guy called Wild Man. He used to live in his van and and he just he'd do all the leather working and he's had hands that could probably tear down a whole house by themselves. You know, he, he, and and the detail like every single piece that they made was like crafted down to the finest detail like the rings and the and the jewels hanging off the robes and things it was just everything was handcrafted it was it was watching them at work and going to the main the main office where all these these people were undertaking their crazy jobs you know you'd, you'd see hanging out in the line all the newly like all the newly worked leather and the the new dresses with their dyes and all the different things it was just it was it was like being transported through time and and yeah, makeup was crazy. You know, I get there at four and they'd have to pull buggers. Like, I'm the palest guy in the world. So they had to like stain my skin, find out a way to keep me looking tan. So they had to stain my skin and put all this stuff and they had to shave me. And like, the people had jobs that were not enviable in that, that I'd say. Um, so yeah, and you'd be doing that for like three hours before you start work. And, and they'd, they'd put on the fake, you know, the, 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 the cuts and the different scars that you've got. <laughs> um, ex exceptional team, but it, and it was a full like you know there was it was a full court press in that in that way in terms of like you'd especially on those big days where you'd have like you know a, a thousand you know well, probably not a thousand but like you know two hundred extras that are like fighting in a massive war and you'd have to get all of them ready in like two hours so you'd have this absolute like again it would look like being in the military you just have a massive line of people kind of going through tents and being sprayed and clothed and you know put things on and blood effects and dirtied up with like fake dirt and all this sort of stuff it was it was yeah they had an absolute machine going it was it was incredible to watch I suppose, Liam, one thing that says about Spartacus is that you were probably pioneers for other series that came out, like Barbarians on Netflix at the moment, mm, uh, right The easy. Last Crusade, uh, in terms of uh, looking at the knights and sort of stuff. So, obviously, shows that came about later years in terms of Netflix, YouTube, they sort of looked on what he sort of did in terms of representing those sort of times as well. And they almost felt that like it was waiting for someone to break the mold uh, in terms of. Uh, coming out as that sort of example and ye obviously were the first to sort of do it so you get maybe the freedom for those shows to be as bold as what they are now today well that's I mean that's that's a fine compliment I hope that it's at least at least partially true it it, it felt like I mean I remember I was watching it like so obviously because I came in later it was it was surreal so like my best friend was like you gotta watch this show spot because it's like nothing I've ever seen and I watched it and I was like good god this is incredible like it's it's like again it's like different television I haven't seen TV like this. So to be part of it is surreal. And, but yeah, I really, I really felt like we were doing stuff that hadn't really been done. Like, uh, and, and it was, it was really pushing the boundaries of a lot of things. And, and it's, it's exceptional. And, you know, and, and sometimes like in the reviews, I feel like some people weren't ready for that and that's okay. Um, and, uh, but I feel like it has such an enduring sort of fandom and, a, and a, an enduring presence that that it feels like we did do something that mattered to people and that people remembered and made and made a mark and that's the highest compliment i guess you can have as a, as a performer as an entertainer where you do something that you know that that stands out from the crowd is quite is often quite nice and i'm, I'm glad that i mean far be it it's, it's i had very little to do it in the grand scheme of things they the entire team like the team of hundreds of people that made that possible was um it was, you know, it was an ex exceptional privilege to be part of a show that, that still merits an interview 10 years later, you know? <laughs> I, I suppose, Liam, when people say that you were the TV series that 
what everyone wanted to see in terms of everyone remembers Russell Crowe, remembers Gladiator, oh, so sort of yeah. an iconic sort of movie. But the worst people were waiting for maybe a TV series to come out of that, maybe something to come to to fill that sort of vibe, that sort of one off movie. And he sort mm. of came and fill that sort of gap that people were sort of longing for that, the, the continuation of Gladiator, the continuation yeah. of Russell's Crowe sort of character, because we were, were waiting for something like it and nothing had came since uh, Gladiator until he arrived. Yeah, well, I was, yeah, I remember when I, I, around about the time that I started acting was when Gladiator came out. And I remember having the actual thought going, oh man, I wish I had have worked this out that I could have somehow had myself in a position that I would have done this you know like that i would have i would have been in able to be in gladiator and funny how life works out 10 years later i'm in tv's equivalent i suppose of gladiator it was a great honor because that's one of my favorite uh, movies of all time i think russell crowe is exceptional in that and Wayne phoenix as well um but there is a w- really wonderful show called rome that one of my buddies is in um and that's that was on hbo and that was also in its way ahead of its time and also an exceptional show about about the roman culture a different angle different approach to it but um, if you haven't seen that, that's also a very good watch if you haven't. But we were very much, you know, and there was like Vikings came after us and Black Sails. And there was a lot of, you know, uh, historical flavored epics that were, you know, much more raw and visceral and honest and open and stuff like that about, you know, about the times that they existed in, which was really kind of cool. We were right on the cutting edge of that, which was nice. I suppose, Liam McIntyre, just to take you away now from Spartacus at the moment, I know yeah. it's a, a, a busy time for you in terms of projects in the pipeline. You might enlighten all our audience and viewers if there's anything coming our way here later on. Uh, in yeah, the I can, I can, I'd be honest, I'd, I'd be obligated to do that. <laughs> My producers out there would be like, come on. Um, no, I've, I've got a very cool top secret thing in the works, which I'll talk about when I'm allowed to. That uh, is one of the most exciting things I've ever done. So we'll see where that goes. Um, there is a show I did last year, a movie called Bring Him to Me, which I'm in, which is a really fun kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it a heist movie. It's, it's, a, it's a, like a, a thriller of sorts where, uh, where a, a young man in a heist go, gone wrong is brought back by, his, uh, by a driver on their sort of last job to the boss to, to, to answer for what happened. Uh, it's very exciting. And that will come out later this year, I think. And then I believe I have another show, which is going to be a Christmas movie, which will hopefully come out this Christmas, I believe. So that'll be exciting things in the pipeline. Very lucky to still be performing. I've got, yeah, I've got yeah, a bunch of cool things coming out. It's great. And tell us, how did Spartacus uh, take time away from uh, his uh, studies in ancient Rome to time travel to UCC in Cork? <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long old story, but you know, like, so my mum's uh, my my stepdad is Irish. He's from Cork, uh, or was. Poor thing, passed away a bunch of years ago now. But um, in his sort of memory, uh, my mum was uh, when I was studying in, in in Melbourne. My mother was like, "Well, if if there's this there's this chance to go overseas and study, um, and you can study in Cork, you know, just just down the road from Cove, from where he's from, it'd be like a really great healing experience for us as a family, and especially for her." To, to go down there and uh, um if if you think you could manage it and i was like i'd love to do that for you mom that'd be great and so i managed to get into this study abroad program did my degree in ucc and was just trying to find things to do just to make friends and to be part of something the last thing i wanted to do was be an actor but i found myself at the right the, you know the wrong place at the wrong time perhaps and and tom creed a, <clears throat> a fantastic director who still does the who does the work up in dublin and stuff like that was a young director at the time and and talked me into the Shakespeare play measure for measure and at the Granary Theatre at UCC and in, in UCC and in Cork uh, in UCC and uh, and never looked back I, that, that changed my entire life this uh, so yeah I mean we, we went to Ireland a bunch of time before that I'm lucky enough to have a place in Cove uh, delightful best part of the world uh, and we're hopefully getting back there again this year that'd be nice um, yeah no Ireland's close to my heart in every possible way I mean I'm called Liam uh, because of that and um, yeah, we've got two lovely redheaded kids that I like to think was my mum's gift from Ireland that, that she sent down to for, for me to have. So yeah, no, we uh, yeah, it was all it was all part of this big long journey of uh, of, of a crazy old life uh, and, and a healing process for us, and and it resulted in the changing of my life to become an actor and look at look at all the things that have happened to me since. It's been beyond beyond of comprehension. It's wonderful. 
I suppose, Liam, for the final 30 seconds now, I know my generation has seen uh, Spartacus, but there's a whole new generation since the time that it brought out. And uh, probably people back then, maybe in the early 2000s, or only no, seven, eight, eight, eight or nine young babies weren't allowed by their parents to see Spartacus. As they should they're, have tw- been. they're 20 year olds now, in terms of that, they can rediscover Spartacus oh, for the very what... first time. What? what could you say to them? I guess, I mean, uh, to that end, it's exciting. I, I don't know what's going to happen. There's writer strikes and all stuff going on in Hollywood now. But Stephen the Knight, as I understand it, is developing more Spartacus that continues the story. So they might find themselves in a position to have to rewatch them anyway. So prepare yourself now, I'd say. Um, but yeah, it, look, it's it's it still is exceptional storytelling. It's still very uh, and it's very exciting story to watch and to be part of. Uh, if you have any interest in history whatsoever, or just that sort of escapism, I, I would, I would, I, it's still a ton of fun. It's, it's a show I like because it's on its, on the surface, it's a very fun, enjoyable show with big action sequences and, you know, big characters and stuff like that, but it actually has these wonderful machinations behind it and really good storytelling ability behind it. So it's a story that you can enjoy just as like sit on the couch, you know, get a beer or whatever and just relax and watch it and enjoy yourself and kind of get swept up in a, in a really big kind of um, big story. It's, 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 I think it does an excellent job even still. And I still think it holds up after all these years, but um, I, you know, I, I would, there's, there's, there's worse television to watch. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That's so true, uh, Liam, in these sort of modern times. Uh, Liam McIntyre, thanks for joining us today in this special episode, Into the Vault, looking back at the iconic 2010 uh, TV series. Uh, you played the role of uh, Spartacus. Uh, I am Spartacus. Spartacus. You are Spartacus <laughs> in, in terms of that. Uh, the saying goes for season two and season three. And uh, that's titled as a, it's like a James Bond uh, badge of honor in terms of that. I think uh, it is in that yeah. world. Yeah, it's very. It's very funny to have people go, I am Spartacus, and me be able to go, well, I actually am Spartacus. It's, you know, it's, it's, it is. It's one of those sayings that, that exists in the zeitgeist. It's, it, it's a fun thing to have to, to, to pull out at parties until people get bored of you. Uh, Liam, from me, Jim Conlon, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Cheers, Jim. Thank you. You too.